Fukushima Prefecture wants to make renewable energy a pillar of its reconstruction following the 2011 disaster and nuclear accident. Now Tokyo Electric Power Company says it will do what it can to help. The heads of TEPCO and Tohoku Electric Power Company met with Economy Minister Yoichi Miyazawa to work out the details. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose said the company will buy electricity from renewable sources in the prefecture. It will renovate a seldom-used transformer substation near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant to make that possible. Head of Tohoku Electric Power Company Makoto Kaiwa agreed to give priority to buying electricity generated in former evacuation zones. The central government has implemented a plan that allows utilities to stop buying solar and wind generated power when there is risk of oversupply. Previously, utilities have been obliged to accept virtually all offers of electricity from renewable sources. Government officials from Japan and South Korea want to mark a major anniversary by deepening their ties. They've agreed to collaborate on energy and tourism projects for the 50th year of normalized relations. Japan's Deputy Foreign Minister Yasumasa Nagamine met with his South Korean counterpart An chung -yi in Seoul. They confirmed officials from both sides will work on energy ventures in other countries. And they agreed to do more to boost tourism flowing both ways. Nagamine called for an end to South Korea's embargo on seafood from Fukushima and seven other prefectures. Officials introduced the restriction out of concerns over contamination after the nuclear accident in 2011. An called on Japanese officials to cooperate with a second round of on-site surveys next week. He said people in South Korea need assurances that the seafood is safe to eat. Seven Japanese municipalities are competing to host a summit of major industrialized countries. It will take place in the country in 2016. Shuichi Abe, the governor of Nagano Prefecture, central Japan, visited the foreign ministry on Thursday. The governor presented the virtues of the resort town of Karuizawa to Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida. The six other candidate cities are Sendai, Niigata, Hamamatsu, Nagoya, Kobe, and Hiroshima. The government will look at facilities like convention centers and hotels, as well as transportation and security. It will also consider the city's ability to garner attention abroad. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is expected to choose the venue before this year's summit in June in Germany. Mount Sakurajima in southwestern Japan is one of the country's most active volcanoes. An eruption 100 years ago was one of the most powerful in Japanese history. Experts predict that another cataclysmic eruption could happen anytime, and people living nearby are trying to prepare. The massive eruption in 1914 left 58 people dead. Local government officials hold an annual drill to ensure a disaster of that scale won't happen again. About 4,500 people living at the foot of Mount Sakurajima took part in this year's exercise. An evacuation advisory was issued via an emergency radio channel. Participants gathered at the nearby port and boarded the ferry. I think that the drill was quite helpful because Kagoshima is close to the mountains and the sea. Tourists who enter Kagoshima might not know about the dangers of Sakurajima, so I guess um, perhaps somehow informing people of the possible dangers. The volcano has been erupting almost constantly since 1955. During an eruption in 2013, the column of smoke stretched up 5,000 meters. The government is warning people not to approach the volcano. The number of cyber attacks in Japan is surging. Now the government is taking steps it hopes will stamp out hacking both from within the country and from overseas. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi looks at what the group hopes to achieve and possible concerns. Japanese leaders have launched a new body to tackle threats to cybersecurity. I want you to make every effort to safeguard the lives, property and well-being of people in Japan by strengthening cyber security. The new body will look at ways to strengthen the country's ability to gather information about suspected cyber attacks. 
That includes staying on top of the latest anti-hacking software to ensure the country's servers remain safe. It seems no one is safe from cyber attacks anymore. In fiscal 2013 alone, more than 5 million cases were reported in Japan. That's nearly a five-fold increase from a year earlier. The problem of hacking is an international issue. At the end of 2014, a movie about a fictional plot to kill the North Korean leader led to a cyber attack on Sony Pictures. The U.S. government accused North Korea of involvement, but leaders in Pyongyang denied it. The incident developed into a diplomatic dispute. Washington eventually slapped more sanctions on the North. An expert on cyberspace says it's reasonable that the Japanese government has decided to act now. It's true that cyber attack uh, to Japan is increasing and uh, Japan is kind of vulnerable. Uh, for such kind of attacks. And these days, the software controls many instruments, including like automobiles. So actually now software can physically kill people. So uh, the threat is now not uh, really as, uh, in the cyber world. Uh, now threat is on physical world. He also said taking countermeasures against cyber attacks must not infringe on people's privacy. It's true that uh, we are facing uh, the risk of a cyber war, but uh, strengthening intelligent agencies uh, sometimes can lead uh, the invading privacy or uh, controlling, uh, over controlling people. And also, uh, uh, I'm kind of concerned uh, with the possibility of uh, overgrowth of intelligent agencies. So we really should keep uh, keep check uh, any excessive move by government. Hatta says people cannot just let the government handle the problem by itself. He says every individual must educate themselves about the issue and remain alert. Jay Yamagishi, NHK World. Japan's cabinet ministers have approved a new space development plan. It's aimed at improving the country's satellite surveillance system to make Japan a safer place. Government officials say the increasingly severe security environment around Japan has made space more important. The plan calls for six more quasi-Zenith satellites. They'll be used in Japan's version of the global positioning system. The country has just one such satellite in orbit at present. At present, the government will also raise the number of intelligence-gathering satellites from the current four. They collect images of military facilities. We have created a long-term concrete plan that is closely in line with our new security policy. It marks a historic turning point in Japan's space development. Government officials hope to strengthen the country's industrial base for further development and use of space. They say the plan will expand the scale of Japan's space industry operations to more than $40 billion over the next 10 years.